It's remarkable that as we end our long and expensive campaign in Afghanistan, so many are concluding that what we need is more war, more weapons, and billions of dollars more than even what the Pentagon is asking for. And it's remarkable that many of the very same voices who say they're worried about our debt and deficit are also demanding this sizable increase. It's as if we've learned nothing from the past 20 years. We need to have an honest conversation about the Pentagon budget. We need to ask ourselves what is achievable and deliverable and make funding decisions based on the threats of the future, not the past. We need to make decisions based on threats, not on what is good for our districts. We need to actually prioritize. And I want to be clear, there are some good things that would be funded in this addition. And there are some areas in our defense budget where we need to increase funding especially as it relates to military personnel and families. We need to expand resources for mental health and housing and childcare. But these are priorities that we can address within the existing top line number that we have. And I hear a lot of my colleagues talk about China. If we are really serious about competing with China, we need a better resourced and funded diplomatic corps and greater investments in our development practitioners so we have resources to compete with China's investments. We need to invest in our education system in innovation, in our domestic infrastructure, in pandemic preparedness. That is what will determine if we are competitive with China, not whether we have one more F-35 that even the Pentagon says they don't need. For the last 20 years, we've been told we need more, but I think it's time to recognize that there are simply not military solutions to every problem. I am voting no on increasing the budget by 23.9 billion, and I urge my colleagues to do the same.